Hey folks, Patrick here, and we're going to do a quick video on the Gripe Vulnerability Scanner um, maintained by Ancor. So Gripe scans container images um, in various forms, so Singularity, Podman, Docker. It also scans what they call file systems or you know folders such as node modules folders, virtual, Python virtual environments, Rust cargo, and so on. Uh, so we'll just quickly download Gripe and run through some commands. This is a very powerful tool that doesn't take that long to get up and running with. Um, okay, so we're just going to search here on the Gripe GitHub repo for their installation script. And you can install with Homebrew or Chocolatey on Windows as well. I'm going to grab this script and paste into the command line. Now, there's something I would recommend for many systems um, for to edit this script that they provide, which is you may not have access uh, as you know as your usual user to the user local bin, which is the um, the sort of directory that they give us default here. So you're, you, if that's the case, probably is for many of you, you're going to have to add sudo before this sh here um, So make that change. You can also, if you have folders on your path, that where you you know that you can have write access to by your user, and you may not need this stuff. But let's go ahead and install. Okay, it looks like we have installed. So let's try it out. Gripe help. Yeah, looks like Gripe is up and running. Okay, so let's try out um, a couple of quick scans, and then we'll dig a little deeper into Gripe and and what's going on under the hood. So we'll do Gripe. Pass Python in as an argument. So it's the official image. I did skip ahead there because it takes a minute to scan these, but um, you'll see some cool animations as Gripe works, and, uh, and then you get this fairly verbose output. Okay, and we'll we'll talk about some ways to handle this. Um, and in this case, you know, we this sh is showing an itemized list when you when you uh, the scan finishes, we're seeing an itemized list itemized list of CVEs. Uh, for the Python image on Docker Hub, the official Python image. And if you scroll all the way up, well, yeah, if you skip to the top there, and the, you will see at the top a summary. Um, and here, in this case, we can see we have 75 um, uh, high vulnerabilities, seven critical vulnerabilities, about 700 vulnerabilities total. So you want to be, uh, in this summary area, the things you often will want to look out for are things like the severity, um, but also this fixed status, okay? so. If, if you have uh, CVE in, that are, have been fixed, then that means upgrading your version will, will resolve them. In the, in the case of Python, um, we don't have too many of those usually, um, but other times, you know, you'll see a lot of fixed packages in order to upgrade um, whatever, ver, you know, whatever container image you're using. Things to look out for too are the, the number of executables can give you sort of a general idea of the attack surface you have going on with um, whatever container or uh, file system you're scanning. Uh, and let's see, so, and then of course with the itemized list of CVE, they are listed by, um, you have the package name, uh, whether or not they've been fixed and in what version, and uh, the CVE name, which is useful for looking up some more information. A little trick, which is um, to redirect the output. Um, so often you'll wanna get the summary before you start digging into specific CVE. Um, so let's redirect them to cves.txt. So we're using a redirect there. And then as the um, a, as the output gets generated, we're only going to see the summary then. And we'll actually have a text file with all the CVs. Now, that's usually a lot more um, practical because I, in my experience, you'll want to use the summary often before you want to use the the itemized list of CVs. And also, you know, it's good to have a, that, that text file of the CVEs. You know, we can cat cvs.txt and get that nice itemized list when we do want it, okay? And of course we can grep on it, which is nice too. We can grep, get this uh, grep command here. So we can run a grep command also on our output uh, and see, for example, you know, the critical CVEs or you could use that to check out high CVEs or, and so on. Um, Gripe will produce significantly more and often pretty useful output. Um, but you do have to, you know, if you, if, as we see here, you know, it's only a certain number of fields in this default table format that they give us. Um, if you want more information, uh, you can try this. 
uh, you can specify the output format as being JSON, and this will give us extremely verbose output. So this is gripe flag O for, or flag output um, hyphen hyphen output or hyphen O and ask for JSON. Uh, and it'll also give you other formats such as cyclone. Um, but you'll see here now once this generates that we're going to have extremely verbose output. Um, so let's give it one second. Yeah, so this it really gives all the information Gripe has on these CVEs, um, which is going to require some more parsing. Also pretty useful for your, um, you know, if you want to create some automation around this. Um, but there's, you know, there's more significant information on advisories. You've got digests, manifests, pretty much everything Gripe's got on these CVEs in here. Now, I, Gripe can also scan what they call file systems. Often I'll run this just on something like a node modules folder or a Python virtual environment. It also handles things like a requirements.txt, treating it sort of like um, S, uh, S bombs. But um, if you do, I did take the liberty here of creating a venv folder. So ls venv here in my home directory. So you can see the usual um, files. And Gripe can go ahead and scan that if we just pass the pass the path to the folder we want to scan. And I didn't install that much in it, but we found a few couple, couple of vulnerabilities. I installed some older packages in there. So let's check out some of the other output formats we can create with Gripe. Um, so Gripe provides templates, um, Hugo, it's based on Hugo templates. And uh, there are a couple of other additional things you can create. You can create HTML reports, you can create CSVs. Um, in order to do this, you do need to download the Gripe repo from GitHub because that contains the templates. And so once we have that, let's go ahead and grab that. So I'm back to the Gripe repo here. Hit that code. Grab the URL. And let's git clone it. Let's to our home folder. And yeah, then you can use this command to put this in here. But basically, you want to provide us the output format template and then pass the the path to the specific template using this T flag. You pass the path to the specific template you want to use. So this is one that I quite like, which is this HTML template. Um, and then pass in some software artifacts as an argument, just as you would normally. So let's use one of our chain guard images now, and we'll generate a HTML uh, report for the CVE in this. So let's do CGR.dev forward slash chain guard forward slash, and we'll use our chain guard Python. And we'll redirect this to a report.html. Otherwise, it's just going to output a bunch of HTML to our standard app, but that wouldn't be that useful. So it's running it. OK, that went pretty quick. Um, I'll open this in Google Chrome. Open that report.html. And we see this very nice um, HTML generated output. Um, it's pretty useful for, you know, if you're writing a blog post or something like that. And uh, so we're bragging a little bit, but we don't have any CVE currently in our Python image. Cool. Let's do one last thing. And I just want to show you the uh, low to no CVE image we have at ChainGuard for Gripe. So you can use this as well. Um, but if you go ahead and run Docker, run interactive, TTY, it's uh, cgr.dev ChainGuard. Uh, gripe. And let's scan an image. We can scan. Uh, let's just scan the official Nginx. Okay, and that scanned the Nginx image using our uh, loader no, no CVE chain guard image for Gripe and output the CVE for Nginx. Um, and that's a great choice if you're setting up some Kubernetes workflows or CI. Uh, we do recommend taking a look at that uh, Gripe image that we provide at chain guard. People often ask where the data for Gripe comes from. Uh, and we can actually check that. Gripe provides some pretty cool open source tools. One of them is called Vunnel. And I have, you can pip install Vunnel, pip install, V-U-N-N-E-L. I already have it installed, so it should say requirement already satisfied. Oh, sorry. Where is that? Yep. But, um, but you can do Vunnel list, and it'll give you a, a very general sense of where some of the, the place, the sources are for the Gripe database. So really what Gripe is doing is, um, and you can actually do this, there's a, a repo they have called GripeDB, um, and you can use Vunnel as well, uh, but they aggregate from all these different providers, including our own, uh, WolfieSec and ChainGuard, 
we are our sources as well. They aggregate from all of these sources, they normalize them, and that is the database that gets refreshed every day. It's a SQLite database that gets downloaded. It, it, it gets checked every time Gripe runs. You know, you'll see that at the top, Gripe. Uh, run it really quick. You know, we'll do ours so we don't have to do so much output. But if you check the top, It'll tell you, oh, no update available. So basically, every time Gripe runs, it'll check if there's a new database. The databases get refreshed every day. It's a SQLite database that's then stored and cached on your machine. So Gripe tends to be very fresh in terms of what it checks against. Um, and I'd say, are there specific advantages to Gripe over some of the other scanners? I think all this, these different scanners, um, Gripe, Trivi, and uh, Docker Scout are the ones I've been using the most recently. They have their uh, advantages and disadvantages. One advantage I've seen with Gripe is that they, uh, it seems like a pretty stable and robust implementation. So I've been using it to scan some very large images for frameworks such as NVIDIA's Nemo, and it doesn't choke on the, I won't, I won't name names on who, on other scanners that are uh, currently choking on that image, but Gripe does take a while to complete, but it does complete it, and it gives you all the CVs in that framework. All right, so that's Gripe, and we'll probably be having a few other videos on scanners such as Trivi and Docker Scout, so stay tuned for those. All right, Patrick out.